for our next inductee, I was going to do the introduction, but I was looking through the attendee list today, and I noticed somebody who had the exact same last name, and I thought, what are the odds? So I talked to that guy, and I said, would you want to do the introduction? And he agreed to. I'd like to bring Scott Mawaka up here, uh, president of Fleet Response, and he's going to do our next induction. Good evening, everyone. It is with great pleasure and honor that I am here tonight, not only to support my father, but now to induct him as well. My father taught me many short quotes of wisdom as a young man. You haven't failed unless you failed to try. Speak up. The customer is always number one. He taught me so much about life, and he certainly taught me to be the professional that I am today. But more importantly, he taught me how to be a man. Uh, he's my hero, and I love him, and I'm very proud of him this evening. And I bring to you my father, Ron Mawaka Sr. You know, it was kind of interesting listening to Don, John Demachowski talk because he said he had this uh, passion for boxing. Probably not many people in this room knew that I was a boxer. For a while, I was boxing oranges over at A&P. And, well, you get the rest. It's really, it's really an honor. Uh, I've been in fleet for the last 30 years. And I just loved every moment of it. Uh, it's a shame I had to get old and move on. But um, I'm ready for the next chapter. You guys will probably think this is a rather fruity presentation. But starting out, let me just give you a little bit of background. In 1984, I was a vice president of a rental car company called Jiffy Auto Rental. Prior to that, I was a commercial uh, insurance representative for Johnson and jo not Johnson and jo Alexander and Alexander, two names. Um, <laughs> you get it. So my boss sent me out on a call. We were a, a tertiary car rental company, just way at the bottom end. And uh, he said, "Get out there and see if you can get an air airport rental car program started up." And I said, "But aren't we like 30 miles away from the nearest airport?" He said, just see what you can do. Well, I went up to Toledo, Ohio, and called on a travel manager who also happened to be a fleet manager. That day changed my life forever. His name is Earl Mitchell. I don't know if Earl is around today, or even living for that matter, but I owe him everything. I was, I was telling him about our car rental program. He said, what do your car rental company really do? And I said, we deliver cars to people who have been involved in an automobile accident or car was stolen. And uh, you know, we keep them moving. He says, could you do that for my fleet cars? I says, well, you know, it, it's, it's all about whether you have the proper insurance coverage. I says, could you call in the risk manager and see if you have non-owned and hired car? He said, well, I know we have it, but he called in the risk manager, and sure enough, the risk manager said, absolutely, we have it. You remember um, Jersey Boys, where Bob Gaudio says, I picked up a few notes, and bump, 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 and he said, and the whole world exploded. Well, that's exactly what happened to me, but only in the, in the fleet rental car business. It just... It was an epiphany. It just, bang, it hit me. I didn't get the idea. It got me. So went back and told my bosses all about it and how excited I was. What an opportunity. And this gentleman also said, join this organization. It's called NAFA. So I looked into it, and sure enough, I did. It wasn't long before we were just cranking up all sorts of fleet rentals. People like George Argueta was calling me all the time. And, getting uh, cars for Selenese and Helen Smorgans from Johnson & Johnson and places like that. Um, so I worked for that company, but unfortunately, this was in the early 80s, I guess the um, uh, interest rates were up in the high teens to, to get rental cars, and this company floundered financially and decided to shut their doors down. But in the interim, I had this idea. And I said, you know what, well, what if we could rent cars 
without owning them. Travel agents do it all the time. So I got a bunch of people together who were, who were my co-founders in the corporation, and, and they went along with me. We started calling on third-level car rental companies. We knew that in some places a firm like Enterprise is great almost everywhere, but we didn't have that sort of luxury to be able to, to rent from Enterprise at that time. So we went out to independent car rental companies like one in Tomball, Texas, and one in Chicopee, Massachusetts, and, and one in New York City. And they all had different cars, and they all had uh, different capabilities, if you will. So Rental Concepts was formed. Boy, and I'll tell you what, once we got started with this new concept, why pay to insure somebody else's car? was our approach. Why you have to pay for liability and collision when you got it right on your insurance policy paying already. Our clients just stayed away in droves. They were just frightened to death of that concept. Some came along and did it, uh, saw, the, saw the light, but not too many. So most of a year went by and uh, every day, every single day, my, my wife who was working retail making the total of $9,000 a year that we made in 1986, would pack lovingly an apple in my lunch, some days a nectarine. That was when she got paid. But Franny, I love you. Thank you for 55 years. This is wonderful. <laughs> Behold the apple. About a year went by and boy, things just just weren't going the way I wanted. Working, 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 14, 15, 16 hours a day. Some days not even sleeping at all, honest. I came home after about, oh, I'd say about 11 months. And to that point, our sales for that year were $250,000. I had this neighbor across the street from me. He was a truck driver. And without knowing exactly, I would say he was illiterate. He barely could read and write. But he'd come over, and he, if we had liquor, that was great. But always at least for coffee. His name was Larry. Larry's gone today, but I miss him. I said, Larry, I don't know what to do. He said, what's the matter? Why do you look like that? I said, you know, I'm just so frustrated. I want to just crawl under a rock. I'd like to just give this up. He said, you damn fool. He says, don't you know that it takes 72 days to even make a tomato? My God. I said, Larry, you're right. You're right. It's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of nurturing. You're right. So I rededicated myself. And that went on and on. And before long, got a call from Quaker Oats. Some of our girls at Quaker Oats. I, somebody's here from Quaker Oats. And they said, Ron, we just bought golden grain, and we need 600 cars for six months. Oh. I said, what? Yes, that's what we need. From that point on, rental concepts never looked back. Things started to mushroom and, and build and build and build and build. And Boy, I'm ever so grateful. And it's because of a lot of the people in this room who believed in me and either tried me or, you know, dedicated their fleet to doing business with us. Looking back, there were some good times. There were certainly some bad times. I just want to say I, I thank you, and I say it again and again, because rental concepts are just our shell now. We do business as fleet response. And early this year, I sold my interest in Fleet Response along with my business partners, Myron Zadoni and Claude Nolte, to my son, Scott. Scott has taken our company from the time I stopped actively working in the 20 to $30 million range to this year, he'll bill out about $130 million. And that is impressive, Scott. Good job. Um, Again, I, I want to thank my business partners. I want to thank my lovely wife. I want to thank all of you. And most of all my life, I just wanted 
one thing to be able to do, and I'm going to do it tonight and say, I'm glad to be the top banana. God bless you all.